Okay, so this lesson is how we're going to turn all of those quotes that you highlighted and reasons that you gathered in the two articles and funnel them down. We got to narrow it down to the best evidence and organize paragraphs, okay? So the first thing uh, you do is the brainstorming process. We've done that. You identify all possible evidence in the text that would support your answer. Why should school start early? You highlight it and then you list it out in your own words, which is what we've done on the slide, okay? Notice I say all possible. We don't judge. At this point, this is the widest opening of our funnel. We want absolutely everything that could be used to support why schools should change their start lines and start later. Um, as we go through this process, we're gonna narrow down the evidence we wanna use um, to the very best evidence that supports that, okay? But at first you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna leave anything out, just list everything. Once you've done that, we're gonna organize it. So we wanna review the evidence. At this point, we're still not really gonna get anything, but we are gonna to start to create some categories, right? So we want three to five categories or kind of topic areas that the evidence fits under. So there's a lot of different evidence in these articles. There was evidence about the biology of um, you know, uh, students and why it is that your bodies and your biology makes it so you wanna go to bed later and get up later um, and how much sleep you need. We looked at how it improves uh, learning, right? And how, um, you know, uh, getting more sleep because the school starts later um, helps students learn better. How it makes them feel better, emotionally feel better, right? So that they have better mental health, they're happier. How it helps them feel better physically and they perform in athletics and other um, physical uh, activities, right? So that it's better for their physical health. Um, and so those are different areas that the evidence would fit under. So those are like the categories, right? And on the back of uh, this chart is uh, a place for you to create these categories, okay? So this is where you would put these categories, right? Uh, mental health, emotional health, physical um, well-being, learning, uh, better learning, um, better attention or focus, anything like that, right? That's going to be here. And then you're going to give it a color, okay? So, you know, a highlighter color, right? Yellow or purple or blue or pink or whatever your highlighter color is. And then what we're going to do is you're going to go through all the evidence on your slide and you're going to kind of color code that bulleted information which category does it seem to fit in, right? Is it your mental health, emotional health, physical health, athletics, learning, um, you know, what, biology, which kind of category does it fit under? And you're going to highlight that evidence um, the same as category. And then we're going to actually start to evaluate, okay? So we're going to color code our evidence right on the slides, and we're going to evaluate to now actually decide which categories, which evidence are we going to put into our paragraphs. And you're going to decide that by looking at what do you have the most of, right? What, what do you have the most colors of and what's the strongest evidence, right? We're going to be looking for three categories in the end. We want to, we want to choose three categories, right? And we want to include, uh, a paragraph on each category. So you're looking for the best evidence, um, and that's uh, where we have now funneled it down to this is what we're gonna actually use. Before I show you that, I do wanna go over a little bit of terminology. So we're gonna change some things. So I think it's easier, right, when you're looking at your evidence to think of, okay, well, what category would this fit in? But category is really just a topic, right? So if it's, you know, your um, biology, um, if it's your uh, emotional and mental health, if it's athletics, if it's learning, right, that now becomes the topic of your paragraph, right? So school should start time late, school, school should start, um, their start later in the morning because it's better for students and then whatever your topic is, right? And then, those examples that you put in your own words, 
those are now your examples you know a reason why right it uh, <clears throat> is better for student learning is because right of this and then the quote right from the actual text that you drew this example for right so this supports your example you highlighted something and then you just put it in your own words so this kind of introduces your quote in your own words this is why right it improves student learning or this is why it's better for your emotional well-being and uh, here's the quote that supports that the last thing we're going to want is a tie back okay and a tie back is in your own words after the quote you explain how the evidence is important to schools. So what's going to happen is all this evidence is about how it affects students, right? How sleep, getting more sleep or getting less sleep affects students. But the question is, why should schools start later? So once you've explained why it's important for students, you then have to tie that back and explain why it's important to school. School should care about student learning. School should care if their students are successful in athletics. School should care that students are happy and you know mentally uh, feel good, right? And that's why they should change their start times. And so you have to tie back your evidence, which is focused on how it affects students, to why that's important to schools. Okay, so we're gonna call that a tie back. A few additional things, each quote's going to need an anchor, right? So this is a, a phrase that we put in front of our quote. Uh, those include phrases like the author writes, the author says, according to the author, beyond she writes. If you're going to use the author, you should also use the title of the article, which is kind of long. So if you want to avoid that all the time, you could just use the actual author's last name. So I say here, the words the author can be replaced with the actual name and a comma right, can always be replaced with the word that. So like in this the last example here, Bianchi writes that. So it's either a comma or the word that. It's good to mix it up. And then you're going to want to cite the quote, which is providing the required information for whoever's reading your essay to find it. So that in, would include, in this case, for MCAS, the last name of the author, because we have two articles, so you definitely want to do that, and the paragraph number. Um, for the quote. 